Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining today's Chalk webinar on how to integrate our lesson planner and gradebook with an existing Schoology account. My name is Michael Machinsky, uh, and I am the head of support here at Chalk. As I mentioned earlier, uh, just a refresher for those who are still joining, uh, there is a Q&A option within Zoom where you can ask questions during our presentation. I'll be focusing on answering questions about the features that we are currently looking at in the app throughout the presentation. So if you have questions about features that we'll be either looking at later or just general questions, uh, it may be worth saving them until uh, later in the, the presentation. Uh, we will have some time at the end of the presentation for some open questions about anything covered or not covered today. I do want to stress that in this webinar, we will be reviewing how to use Chalk as a digital planning solution for you as an educator, but we will not be going over how to set up your individual Schoology accounts. Rather, this webinar will focus on how to integrate your Schoology courses with Chalk. So we will be sharing this webinar following the presentation, but any additional questions or concerns can always be sent to us through support at chalk.com. For those of you who already have Chalk accounts, we will be going over the setup process. So the first part of the webinar, some of the information may be what you already know, but I do encourage you to at least follow along. Uh, and if you're already using some of the Schoology integration, then this might serve as either a refresher or you might learn some information about our current offerings that you didn't already know. Uh, but if during the setup process you feel like stepping away or grabbing a cup of coffee, please feel free to do so. For those of you who are brand new to Chalk, I'll just give you some quick background. We are a curriculum mapping and lesson planning platform that helps align educators and schools. So Chalk first started off as a lesson planner when our CEO, uh, William, found that his teachers spent several hours creating lesson plans and aligning standards. And with his background in technology, he thought to simplify the process of planning. So uh, we created PlanBoard, which is our primary application. And it's an online lesson planner and gradebook that is used by educators worldwide and allows you to bring all of your lesson planning into an online environment. So the intention is to dramatically cut down on your planning time, especially year over year planning. And it is web-based and accessible through your browser. But we do also have some mobile applications available for Android and iOS so that you can access your lesson content anywhere. And our free teacher accounts include access to our lesson planning, gradebook, and attendance apps. But we offer a paid individual subscription called Chalk Gold that includes access to premium features. So some fun uh, functionality, such as sharing, uh, has options in the free version. So, but to take full advantage of all of the sharing features that we have uh, would require a year need to upgrade. Um, in terms of the Schoology integration, some features are available to all free accounts, and some features are included in our Chalk Gold subscription, uh, or if your school has purchased one of our Chalk solutions uh, for schools. Um, but I will be sure to point those out throughout our presentation. For today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through an account setup to show you how to import your content from your existing Schoology courses and set up your student rosters. And then we're going to go over some of those premium features included as part of our Chalk Gold subscription. And as we're going through, if you have any questions about the particular features we're looking at, please feel free to ask in the Q&A option in Zoom. So to start off, I'm going to create a new account and go through the setup process to show you how you can import your Schoology courses during the class creation step. So if you already have an account, you would normally do, be doing this when creating a new semester or a new school year. Uh, but if you don't have an account, then you can sign up uh, at chalk.com. Uh, I just click the, the teachers button at the top here, and we'll be using this sign up for free button to create a new account. We will be moving through the setup process fairly quickly. So uh, I recommend just watching my screen rather than trying to follow along directly. Uh, and then maybe you can come back and set up your account later. Uh, we do have additional help resources available for uh, if you are having any questions about the setup process. So you can always feel free to uh, reach out to us, whether through our live chat uh, or by accessing our uh, knowledge base of support articles. For now, I'm just going to start off by clicking here and I'm going to enter my name and my email and set up a quick password there. And I'm just going to make sure that I remember my password and my emails, because that's what I'm going to be using to access this in the future. And once we get into continue, we'll be moving on to our planner setup process. So this generally requires three main steps. We're going to create our school year, 
create our classes and then schedule the classes into our planner. If you, you think of it in regards to a, a paper planner that you might buy, uh, it's essentially like building your planner from the ground up so that it reflects your personal schedule and you're deciding what appears on each page of your planner. So we're just gonna click here to get started. And the first step is to create our planner dates. So by default, your planner is going to set you up as the whole school year. Uh, one of the easiest ways to think about this as you're, you're really just kind of creating that bucket of information that everything is going to go into for this coming year. So what we really wanna do is specify when does this coming school year begin and when does it end? So uh, over here, we start school in September. So I'm just going to adjust these dates a little bit. But uh, all you really need to do is select the first day of class and the last day of class, and then enter a different name if you need to. So I'll just leave the school year as the name. One thing I want to quickly touch on here uh, while I'm on this page is that I know in the past, this step used to refer to creating semesters. Uh, and you may be inclined to just create it for one semester at a time. I would only recommend that you do so if you are very much semester based and you never have any classes that run the full year. For most everyone, it makes the most sense to set up the entire school year because that's going to allow you to have your lessons kind of flow throughout the whole year and is especially important if you use our gradebook features. Content in semesters doesn't interact with other semesters. So if you create a fall semester and a winter semester, any grades you entered in the fall would not be considered when making report cards for the winter semester, for example. So we generally recommend just set it up for the entire school year as I've done here or whatever length of time you will be teaching the same set of students. So you can always come back and make adjustments if necessary, uh, if you need to change your start or end dates at a, a later time. But for now, I'm going to click next step here in the corner. And then it's gonna ask about our teaching schedule. Now this refers to how our classes change from day to day. So if you teach the same classes in the same order every day, you would have a daily schedule. If you teach different classes on certain days of the week, but every week is the same, then the weekly option would be best. Uh, so even if you have maybe the exact same schedule Monday to Thursday, but Fridays are a different schedule, that would still be a weekly schedule if it repeats week after week after week. If you have any other combination of schedules like an AB schedule or uh, multiple weeks or multiple days, then selecting the rotation schedule op option would be best. I'm going to pick the weekly schedule for this demonstration, but no matter what option you pick from this step, uh, the, the first thing you want to do is to confirm your teaching days. So these are just these toggles at the top here where you can turn on and off uh, which days you teach classes throughout this school year. Um, and you can just click the toggles to turn them on and off. If you selected the daily or weekly option, this is the only thing you'll need to do for this step. But if you have a rotation schedule, then you'll need to take some time and use the rotation builder to make sure that you set up a schedule that suits your needs. But for this demonstration, I'm just going to have uh, a regular weekly Monday to Friday schedule that uh, applies to most teachers uh, as, it, as we've, we found. So, once I move forward, now that we've created this bucket, like I was talking about before, which is our school year, we've set our teaching days and what kind of schedule we'll have. Now we're going to create and schedule our classes so that they can populate lessons in our planner. Normally, you would start by clicking this button here to add a class. And uh, you have two different options for creating blocks. So you have this subject class uh, and a non-teaching block. So for subjects or classes, this could be something like math, art, physical education, drama, uh, but you can also create classes for things like school clubs that you wanna plan or take notes for, um, or and anything that you really are going to be creating content for. So it's, it's not uncommon to see things like study groups, uh, if you're, you have them consistently within the school year and you wanna make that a, a class, then you can do so. Uh, if you uh, run a, a tutoring program, then maybe you'll have an entire class that is just a particular student so that you have all that student's content organized within that class. Uh, it's, it's very broad in terms of what you can do and how you can use it. Just essentially, you are going to be either creating content within the class you create, or you won't be creating content, which is what the non-teaching period would be for. So these are just 
any kind of events that you want to schedule on your timetable to remind you when they're happening. So maybe lunch, recess, prep periods, morning announcements, if you want to include what time those occur at. Um, and this would just be something that you're not creating any content for, but serves as a reminder throughout the day. With either option, creating classes is as simple as choosing a name. Um, so for example, technical education and a color. Uh, and we have an assortment there that you can choose from and then creating the block that way. Now, we're going to be doing things a little differently because if you already have your courses set up in Schoology, we actually have an option to import your classes more efficiently. So this is one of those free options that I mentioned earlier that we have available with Chalk. So if you're just getting up and running with your Chalk account today and you're just getting started, but you already use Schoology um, or Google Classroom, uh, which is another integration we have, then you can click this button here and be able to bring this content easily into your Chalk account. So I'm going to select the Schoology option for today. And it's just going to ask that you log into your account, grant permissions for Chuck to, to access the content there. And what it's going to do is pull the data from Schoology and pre-populate your classes. So I'm going to sign in here. It's going to ask for approval. Uh, and I'm already logged in on this browser in my Schoology account, so uh, it knows which one to select. And it's already just taken that information and seen all of the classes that I, uh, the courses in Schoology that I've created, and I can select the ones that I want. So in this case, I'll just bring them all in and we can click OK. And then on this screen here, just a little confirmation uh, so we can change the color if we, we want a different color or we can edit the name. Uh, so perhaps I set this up as English 101, but I'm going to change it to English 9 just to match the naming convention that I have here in PlanBoard. And then all I have to do is hit this import button and it's going to create all of those classes that I have already uh, created the courses for in Schoology. So you, you don't necessarily have to do all everything from scratch and build each individual class in PlanBoard. If you already have your courses set up in Schoology, you can just bring them in with a, a quick sign in and pull all of that content. So I just have a few examples here, but if you're teaching elementary perhaps, and you have a, a much greater number of classes to bring in uh, or courses set up in Schoology, then this could be a real time saver during the setup process. Uh, and especially uh, if you already have an existing account in uh, with Chalk and you're creating a new semester or school year uh, for, for the future, then this is another way that can just very much speed up the process. And from here to finish setting up our planner, we just need to schedule our classes on the timetable space here. So what you're doing here is you're creating that schedule that will repeat itself uh, over and over again throughout the, the course of your school year. And it will populate your planner with all the correct classes for each day's lesson planning. So depending on, on what rotation day you have assigned. Since I'm just teaching a weekly rotation, Monday to Friday, each day corresponds to a different day of the week. But if you have a rotation schedule, then it might be a little bit more complicated. But uh, setting it up is as easy as just grabbing the block, clicking on it, and then dragging it over to the side and populating it that way. Now, if you have a, a classes of a particular length, I would recommend setting that early by just clicking on these two little lines at the bottom and dragging it to extend the, the length of the class. Because when you, you drag more instances of a class, it will actually default to the most commonly used time that you already have on your timetable. So making sure to set the time early uh, can be a real time saver, as, as it were. Uh, and then once a, a block is on the timetable, you can remove it by clicking on the little X that appears, or you can click on the block and have more granular editing. So if I wanted to change the start time, uh, maybe my school uses very, very specific times. So this class starts at 9.58. I can edit it through here. Uh, or I could even quickly switch it into a, a different class by using those options. And I won't go over all of the options we have with, with scheduling here. Um, the, the quickest is usually to just make sure you can set up your schedule as necessary there. 
if you are teaching a lot of classes on the same days, you can insert them in bulk by using this schedule button here, and then just selecting all of the days that you need to insert them and the start and end times. Uh, I generally recommend if you teach the same class every day, but maybe at different times, you can just create all of the blocks. And then once they're on your timetable, you can click and drag to move them around. Uh, and then it will save you the, the time from having to create each one individually. But I'm just going to quickly create a schedule here, something that looks usable. Normally, if you're just getting started uh, with creating an account, this can take some time to get just right, depending on the complexity of your schedule. But I'm just going to create a quick schedule here for the purposes of this presentation with a few classes and move along here. So once I click the Start Planning button, you can see that we are, are here in our planner, and it's just going to point out where our live chat icon is so that you can always reach out for some more support. And we have all of these blocks available based on the schedule that we set up. And we can click inside and start creating some lesson content here. And as you can see, it's very similar to a document editor like a Google Doc. Uh, and you can uh, embed any images or videos or create tables and structures and add attachments and whatever else that you need for your lesson content. But we, there is one last thing that we want to get set up uh, before we get kind of moving into creating content, and that is to make sure that our gradebook is set up and that our students are enrolled. So the gradebook portion of the apps here uh, is called Markboard, and you can see it at the top of the page here in the menu. So I'm just going to click here and select all classes. And what this will do is take us to our list of classes that we just created. And I can click on any class and view its contents. Now, we don't have any assessments or grades available yet because we don't have any students enrolled. So we can't assess students and assign them grades if they don't exist yet. So this will be the first step that we want to do to make sure that all of our students are enrolled in the proper classes. Now, if you have a free teacher account and you imported your classes from Schoology, all you have to do is well, let's go to our, our students tab here. And there's this button here titled Sync Schoology. And once I click that, it's just going to confirm, do you want to bring in your student list from your Schoology course? So since we imported our classes already from Schoology, this class and our Schoology course are linked and they share this information, this data. So I can just click yes here and it will bring up the list of students that I've created uh, and I can add student IDs if I, I need to. Uh, maybe my school doesn't use those and that's not necessary, but I wanna bring all of these students in. I just need to click save and it's going to create and enroll these students in this class. Um, so I just have a few examples here, but maybe you have 25, 30 students uh, rather than manually entering the information for them. If you already have them set up in Schoology, you can just bring that in very quickly. Um, if you're just doing this for the first time and maybe you did not import your classes already, then this Sync Schoology button will instead say import and you can click it and it will just ask you to sign into your Schoology account uh, and then manually link the appropriate course to this class in Chalk. But once we do this for one class, we can just quickly use this class selector uh, in the top left here and select another class and I can import some more students for this class. Again, just a few example ones, but I can repeat this for, for all of the other classes in my list and very quickly uh, bring in these students and make sure that they're all set up and ready to go. So very quick, really saves you from doing all of this setup from scratch across two different platforms. Um, so uh, it, ra rather than setting up everything in Schoology and setting up everything in Chuck separately, it just kind of creates a little bridge to save you some time. And if, say, partway through the school year, you have new students joining your classes, you can just click this Sync Schoology button here, um, and it will let you know if there are any additions to your class list uh, or your student roster in Schoology, and you can import those additional students in here. So uh, instead of 
separate uh, separately setting them up. You can set them up in Schoology first and then just pull that information for those students into Chalk. But here it's telling us all of our students are up to date. This class list matches up correctly with Schoology, so there's nothing else that needs to be done for this course. So we're actually going to jump back to the lesson planner now. And I'll show you a relatively new addition that we added to make it a little easier to access your Schoology course content from within Chalk. Pardon me. So here we are on the week view, which shows you all of your lessons that you have for your scheduled classes for the week. And it's typically the most common lesson planning space in the app. Uh, and we're just going to click on a lesson block here. So once again, you can see that you can create uh, all the content in here. Uh, and you can very quickly switch to different, different classes and be able to edit the content and make changes to other lessons. And it's a very, very useful workspace uh, here in the week view. But let's say you're using Schoology as your learning management system. You probably have many student-facing resources that you created directly in Schoology. So something that we've added to make the lesson planning process a little more efficient in regards to accessing this content from different platforms is this little button down here in the lesson editor. So it looks like the Schoology logo. Uh, and if your classes in Chalk are linked to your courses in Schoology, this allows teachers to have a link to any materials that are scheduled for that day or are relevant for, for that, that content. So it's just a quick little link and it allows you to link directly to relevant school course content so for example, uh, if I have this event here, a concert band rehearsal, um, I know that I, I can access that from Chalk uh, and just click any of these buttons to, to view the contents. I have a rhythms worksheet. Maybe I want to reference that quickly while I'm creating my lesson plan. I can just click the link here, uh, or I can use this all materials button to just quickly uh, open the materials for this course in Schoology in another tab and be able to reference that when I'm doing my lesson planning. So the uh, if you haven't yet linked your class to Schoology, when you click this button here, it will just ask you to log in and uh, you'll be prompted to sign in and select the Schoology course you want linked to the class. We've already done that. Um, but now we can just see these materials that we have assigned to this course for Schoology for this date and quickly navigate to there. So it's a small quality of life improvement, but we're we're hoping that if you're working on planning your lessons and you need to refer to a worksheet or an assignment that you have created in Schoology, now you don't need to go searching for it in another platform. You can just quickly access the link here and bring it up and have it on hand from the lesson editor. Now, if your school already has a subscription to PlanBoard uh, with any administrator oversight, uh, this is also very useful for your administrators being able to access these links uh, as well when they're viewing your account. So they'll be able to take these lesson materials into consideration when they're providing any lesson feedback. But now let's say that we're actually done our lesson planning. Uh, we have our whole week set up for our classes. Uh, obviously, we don't have the best content here for this demonstration, but uh, just for the purposes of, of showing off the, the feature here. Uh, what we're going to do now is share the lessons that we've created with our students through Schoology. Now, this is one of the paid features included in our Chalk Gold subscription. Uh, so uh, this is also included within our uh, offerings to schools and districts. So uh, any import features like importing your classes or your student list from Schoology, that's all included in all free teacher accounts, but sharing content from Chalk to Schoology, so for example, sharing lessons uh, or assessments, that's part of our paid offerings. So since I just created a new free account, uh, this doesn't have access to be able to share lesson content directly to Schoology, but if I click this, upgrade button in the top there, then I could sign up for Chalk Gold and have access to that and other features such as a lesson search or seeing a history of my lesson edits or being able to share public links to days or weeks of lessons. If any of this interests you, uh, I do recommend taking a look at the 
information page when you click the upgrade button there when you have a chance. Um, as for myself, I'm just going to do a little bit of uh, behind the scenes magic. And refresh. <laughs> And now my account here uh, has access to all of those those chuckled features so that I can uh, just dis display and demonstrate those for you now. Very magical, I know. Now we have a few sharing options with our paid offerings, but we're just going to focus on uh, sharing these lessons to our students through our Schoology courses for today. So uh, I'm going to use this one here. Uh, my very robust lesson with much content. I hope you don't mind the shoddiness of my lesson. I, I expect there will be more content in the future, but let's say we are taking this lesson here and we want to share it to our students in Schoology. So the first thing you want to do is click the share button in the top right. And within the sharing modal, we have the Schoology button here. And it will give us some options for the kind of post that we want to make. So uh, it's already selected the course that we want to share to, but we can share this as a file in your materials or as an update for students to see. So I'll show you what it's like to post this as an update first, um, because depending on, on which of these, these examples, there's a, a little bit of different functionality. So we have an option to change the title and enter a message. I'm just going to keep this simple and say, here is today's lesson. But this can be a space for putting in anything into the description for the update, whether that be specific instructions to do with the lesson material or any additional links that you, you didn't include in the lesson itself. Um, but what is going to be done when I post this update is that the lesson itself is going to be added as an attachment. And it's going to be added as a public link. So what this means is that anyone who accesses this link will have view access to all of the lesson contents. So that includes any attachments that I have on this lesson, any standards that I've assigned, any embedded media such as videos. And it's a public link that whenever anyone accesses it, it will always display the most recently saved version of this lesson. So. If I make changes to this lesson tomorrow, uh, I don't need to repost it. I don't need to reshare it. Uh, whenever my students will access it, they will always see the most recent version. So it's, it's very useful in not having to, to redo that sharing process there. And you can actually do this for any public link. So for example, if I wanted to post the entire, uh, the day's worth of, of uh, lessons, and then I could do that simply by uh, I'll just demonstrate that very, very quickly. So if I look at the, the days options, then there's a public link for this day. So I can actually click the Schoology tab here, and now I can share the entire day's worth of lessons with my students. Uh, or if I wanted to do the same for my week, I can click the share button next to the week and select the Schoology option. And I would be able to share the entire week's worth of lessons to my students. Uh, and because this is a public link, I can just kind of edit the same public link options here. So if I wanted to only share, for example, my visual arts lessons with my visual arts students, then I can edit the visibility here. But for just sharing this one lesson, uh, I'm just going to keep it simple and click Post Update. And success, this lesson has been shared as an update in my Schoology course. So if you click this button here, we can view in Schoology. And uh, obviously very, very limited here. But if we click this uh, link here, you can kind of see an example of what this would look like. Um, because I'm currently logged into an account, I have options here. But you don't need to be logged into a, a Chalk account to be able to view this content. You would just have it available here any embedded videos, any attachments, all of that would be accessible. Uh, and I could also uh, create a PDF and print this lesson off if I needed to. So directly from, from the public link. And this would be uh, immediately published to students so they can access this content. Now I'm going to share this lesson again, but this time I'm going to do it by adding it to uh, my materials. So this will be a little bit different. 
Again, I click that share button and then this Schoology tab. And I'm going to add it as a file in my materials. So once I click this Add to Materials button, it's going to give me the, the folder structure that I have created for my course. Um, so this is everything that I have on Schoology. And I'm just going to select this Week 1 Lessons option here. And once you found the correct spot where you want to add it, you just click Add it here. And now when we view it in Schoology, um, you'll see that it actually embedded the content. So uh, my example is a little lacking in, in robustness. There's no, no media here. But if I had a video embedded, then that would be uh, accessible here within the materials. Um, or if uh, the student clicks this view in chalk or uses the copy link option, then they could still open this uh, lesson as the public link view instead. So it's two different options for the lesson. You can embed it directly as a material. Um, or if you post it as an update, it's more of that, uh, that public link and it opens in another browser tab. So uh, benefits to both depending on, on what you want to get across or how you want to organize your materials. But uh, I would say that the materials option is best suited for individual lessons as uh, Schoology unfortunately doesn't support embedding an entire day or week of lessons at the moment. So for those use cases, I would uh, strongly recommend that you use the lessons as an update option. Excuse me. And now the last feature that we're just going to briefly look at here is uh, this is will require us to move back to our Markboard Gradebook application, where we'll go over how you can share assessments and grades with students through Schoology. So I'm going to uh, once again click Markboard at the top and select all classes. And I'm going to use my, my visual arts class as an example here. Now, to share assessments and grades, you need to make sure that you've already linked your class and your students to the appropriate Schoology course, which we've thankfully over already done. And from here, we're going to create and grade an assessment. So you can do this from the Assessments tab, uh, where I am right now, by clicking this blue plus button over here and selecting the type of assessment that you want to create. I'm going to create a score assessment. This is the most typical that, that you would use, it's any assessment that has an out of score. And I'm going to call this the art history assignment. And I'll set it to make sure it's out of 10. Uh, I want it to be part of my assignment category. And then on this attachments tab here, I'm going to upload a couple of files. So I have two here that I want to attach. I have instructions for this assessment, so the, the art history assignment. And then I also have the answers. So what I'm doing is I'm uploading both of these to be part of this assessment uh, and be accessible to myself when I'm using Markboard uh, or otherwise in my Chalk account. But uh, that's all. Uh, I've made sure that I'm assessing all my students and I'm going to create this assessment here. And when I create it, it's going to immediately take me to the, the marking page where I can start to assign grades to my students. But before I do, I'm going to uh, actually send this to my students. So what I'm going to do is use this button in the top here called Share in Schoology. And when I click it, you see that it will let me edit some settings before I post, so such as changing the name if necessary. Selecting the category, uh, I'll keep it as homework here. Changing the out of grades if uh, I need to, uh, assessing the due date, and editing the grading scale or grading period. Now, uh, since Markboard is just a, a grade book, we don't have a space for assigning instructions built in directly because, well, the app is mainly just for inputting grades. But here, when you're sharing, you can add instructions for um, how students should access this material uh, and what to respond. So for this case, I'll, I'll just leave a brief instruction. Um, please uh, follow the instructions in the handout and submit your work. Very broad, um, but, but something there. 
And then you have this attachment setting at the bottom here. So this is actually the same attachments that are on the assessment itself that I've created. So uh, when you're creating your assessment, when whatever you add to that attachments tab uh, will appear here. But you can still choose which of these gets shared with your students. So for this example, I have the worksheet here that I definitely want to share with my students, but Maybe I won't share the answers. Uh, I'll, I'll just leave that attached to the assessment for my reference. So in this step, you're able to make sure that the students only have access to what you want them to have access to. So I'm going to make sure to leave my art history answers unchecked. And when I click publish, it's going to immediately share this to my course in Schoology. So if I click the view, uh, you can see my very brief instructions and they can click the uh, attachment that I've created there, leave comments, um, and all of that information that I included for this assessment has been included in the assignment instructions. So you can kind of think of Markboard as your draft state. And then by posting it, you're now publishing it to your students. So once you send it from Markboard to Schoology, it is accessible for your students and they can, they can view it immediately from their accounts. And if you want to make any other changes to uh, what you've shared, uh, so for example, if you want to add other attachments or add some learning objectives, or if you want to set it as a midterm or final evaluation, uh, those are some settings that you need to do from Schoology by clicking the gear icon in the edit option there. Um, so uh, if th that's something that you want to do, then you can do that from within Schoology once you've posted it. And then once an assessment is shared to Schoology, grading it is incredibly simple. All you have to do is enter the grade in Markboard and it will automatically be sent to Schoology. Just like that, direct feedback. So uh, if I enter in some grades here and I can do this quickly by just using the keyboard arrows to move from student to student. So I'm just going to enter some students here, uh, some grades. And I, you can see that as I'm entering these grades, this little saved option is appearing and uh, it updates this. When was the data last sent? So in this case, it was last sent a few seconds ago from when I entered these grades. And now this is all already available for my students to, to access their grading content. So this is a, a great way to keep all of your, your grading data, your formative assessments, your comments and notes within your Chalk Teacher account. Um, but then you can export it when you want to share with your students and you don't have to do the same amount of work in both platforms. So if we just look quickly here at the grade book, you can see that all of these grades have already been sent and considered. And then when I make, make changes, maybe uh, my, my last student here has resubmitted their work uh, and I've accepted it and changed their grade. Once I make the changes in here, um, all it takes is a quick little refresh, and you can see that it's already updated for the student in Schoology. So a lot of it is cutting down on, on the manual work in, in both spaces. Planboard and Markboard uh, and all of our Chalk apps are very teacher forward um, and they're very teacher facing. But we know that if you're using a learning management system like Schoology, it's less ideal to do the same actions and create the same content in both, uh, both platforms well, because there's differences in what you want students to access and what you want to have available for yourself. So with our future integrations and our updates to our Schoology integration, this is something that we really take into consideration is how to reduce the amount of time needed on multiple platforms and try and make lesson planning and grading and sharing with your students uh, a little bit more efficient. And just a brief look at the time. So that actually brings us to the end of our main presentation today. Uh, and we are certainly looking into further Schoology integration for the future. And I'm happy to stick around for a bit and answer any questions that you might have at this time. This might be questions regarded to what we've looked at here, or if you have any general questions about chalk functionality, uh, then please feel free to, to ask at this time. Uh, before we move on to the q and I just want to say thank you for everyone for taking the time to join us today. Um, and we really appreciate you joining us for this webinar.
So uh, one last thing before we jump into questions, I want to remind everyone to take advantage of the live chat in our apps. This is uh, always going to be there. It's uh, available Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, if you are outside of those hours, you can reach out to us over email at support at chuck.com and we will get back to you as soon as possible. We also have support articles available. If you ever need a reminder of how to do any of these tasks or actions, they're at help.chuck.com or through the question mark icon at the top of the page there. Uh, and then you can search for uh, through our, our available articles and have any of that uh, information available to you.